is Father Bill Reinhardt, and uh, I'm an oblate for 60 years almost, 50 of ordination. And uh, I've been in Brazil for 42 years of my ministry. I arrived in July of 1969 in Sao Paulo, and I've worked most of my life in, uh, in and around Sao Paulo, in the south of the country. For the last six and a half years, I've been in Manaus in the Amazon, which has been a big change for me, totally different uh, uh, environment, challenges, and uh, just like a, a new birth in a way for me. In Brazil today, we have about 50 oblates in perpetual vows, and we have another 15 or so in formation, various phases of formation. So we're a small group, big country and a small group of oblates. This makes uh, large meetings difficult, but we do try to get together at least once a year the whole oblate mission in Brazil for our annual assembly. And then we have another meeting of all those working in the Amazon. So, but travel is, is long, I mean, the, the trips are long and quite expensive. So we keep those uh, as minimal as possible. Traditionally, the very top, the very rich, two to five percent small, very small percentage of the population. There's a growing middle class, this is true, especially in the, fa in the past 10 or so years. Uh, maybe 25 percent now in the middle class. And then the vast majority is don't have uh, good housing. They don't, many of them don't have jobs. They don't have decent transportation. Public transportation is terrible in general. Some cities in the south are better, but in the north, where I am now, it's practically impossible. Buses breaking down one day. I saw eight buses broken down on the way to town in 10, 15 kilometers. So the living conditions for the vast majority are very difficult. Drinking water, for example, fundamental right of all human beings is drinking water. 80% of the people in the periphery, the outskirts of the city, which is the vast majority of the city, don't have water, don't have drinking water. They have to either buy it from local capitalists, you know, they get a long hose and somebody has a well and they'll do that, but they still have to pay that person. Or these huge trucks come around and they have to buy from the city government or from some corporation. So fundamentals like housing, water, jobs, health uh, facilities, decent schools, these are all lacking or faulty for the vast majority of Brazilians today. There is, um, among the concerns, all of these things would come in and the other side of the question uh, as concerns. So people are mobilizing and trying to get organized uh, to get more jobs, to get better public transportation, to get better health facilities, schools, and we are working along with them in most of these areas. The environment. We're in the middle of the Amazon uh, rainforest in Manaus, city of two million now, and as I say, about 80% don't have decent drinking water. Here's the biggest river, the largest river in the world, surrounds the city, three quarters of the city, and most people, that, you can't drink that water because it's all polluted, because all the sewers goes right into the Amazon River. Very, very little is treated. Uh, the activities or ministries of the Oblates, in the light of this general social and economic situation, Historically, from the very beginning, the Oblates arrived in Brazil in 45, 1945, after the Second World War. And naturally, the American Oblates, when they arrived, and later the Irish and the <clears throat> French, set up parishes because that was what, what they knew how to do. And uh, 
what the Brazilian church was doing at that time. But gradually we branched out over the years, gave up many parishes. We still have about eight in, uh, in Brazil. We have one school, which is not a parochial school tied to a parish. It serves the English-speaking community in Sao Paulo, which is basically the upper class, the five or six percent who can pay the high tuition. This tuition comes in, helps support the other ministries, all of the rest of us, who are working with the poor and the very poor. So um, it has a purpose, but uh, it's not really within our, our, at least in my opinion, it's not really within our oblate charism, directly. Indirectly, yes. So, um, but in these new ministries, we're working more with formation of the lay people. Vocations are difficult, as in the States, so too in Brazil. Formation of the laity has become more and more our priority, wherever we are working, in the parishes, in the schools, uh, with the people, visiting the houses, whatever we do, we are trying to always a message of courage to face the difficult life, lives that they lead, to help be a secure place where our youth, who have to play ball on the street because they have no place to play, uh, with security, you know, in decent conditions. So we have been able to construct this with the help of many, many people in Brazil and in the States. The Oblate Missionary Partnership has helped us a lot in this, and we are very grateful to them for this. But uh, it's a small drop, in a way, in the, in the huge ocean. So we're also working with the popular movements, trying to accompany these uh, local organizations for better housing, for better uh, health care, schools. We're working a lot on that in our particular area in Manaus, where we blocked off the main thoroughfare into our whole neighborhood to protest against the lack of a school, a high school for our kids. They have to go to other neighborhoods. How do we tie this up with the, the future of the Amazon is, uh, is a big question. A, uh, one thing that can help perhaps focalize this is the government now, dam projects meet resistance. There's a huge dam Belo Monte, which is in the state of Pará in the Amazon, billions and billions of dollars, will be the third largest hydroelectric dam in the world if it's completed. We hope it won't be because it will destroy a large section of the interior of the rainforest, driving out the indigenous populations, the poor populations along the river, and it will be an ecological disaster. Perhaps the most prophetic bishop in Brazil right now is a man, an Aust Austrian bishop, Erwin Krautler, who wrote this article, he's quoted in this article, is saying to the bishops of Brazil at their last meeting, we have ten, we are five minutes before midnight. In other words, uh, we're coming down to the wire like the debt <laughs> cap here in the United States, coming, the days are counted when Decisions have to be made. Will this dam go forward with all the destruction to the environment, to the social groups, the small and the poor groups that live in that area, especially the indigenous populations, or will the idea of progress at any price prevail? That means economic progress, no matter what it costs socially, humanly, for our people. So we are on the side, obviously, as oblates within our charism against the dam and for the people. Hope, hopefully, we will be able to organize enough pressure, world pressure. There's a worldwide movement now. You can sign on on the internet called avaz, A-V-A-A-Z, dot com, and you can sign on this petition, stop the building of the dam, promote justice for our people.